Hello, everybody. How is everyone doing? It's Wheezy here. And welcome to Isabella Banks' YouTube channel, where we discuss all things Harry, Megan, and their level up journey. So let me say hello to the people in the comments section. Hi, Judy. Hi, Gwendolyn. Hi, Rafaela. Hi, Marcia. Nice to see you all today. How have you guys been? I hope you're good. I hope you are having a great week. It's been topsy-turvy as usual in the British media. And it just looks like from the royal side of things, um, instead of addressing the issues that they're having, they keep looking to deflect, distract, or take cover, never taking responsibility or accountability, never making the attempt, like it's not an option, to take responsibility for their actions or actually act in a genuine way. It's almost like that cannot even be considered. And meanwhile, that is the only thing that would have resolved this whole issue from the beginning, from the get-go. What are we going to do with this royal family, eh? What the hell are we going to do with them? Meanwhile, while the palace has decided to handle their ongoing PR disaster like despotic autocrats, I have decided to respond to the cry of some of my subscribers who said they want me to report on Sussex News. They're tired of the debacle. And honestly, I don't blame you for being tired. But one thing I will say is that you guys know we're in a war, right? <laughs> um, Almost a little bit controversially, may I just say that being Sussex fans is almost like being a Christian. Being a Christian is not all about being peace and love. Sometimes there is war involved. And I get the sense from the people who say, we just want Sussex news and we don't want to look at anything negative that you're handling this situation almost like the people who own who think that you know who only want to walk on the shiny side on the peaceful side of life when well, unfortunately the world is kind of not like that and harry and megan have decided to fight for the kind of life they want to live and if you're a christian you know that the bible says that the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. And it's not necessarily physical violence, but just genuinely pushing. Pushing with determination for what you want. And for those people who get tired of hearing you pushing, they either, they choose a few options. So the first one is to agree with you and just get give you what you want or you have the people who say you know what we're tired of listening to this person let's just give them what they want or you have the people who say who literally are like the royal family i don't care whether they're right or wrong i'm never going to give them what they want so let's go to war and let's do the battle and so if you want to achieve anything as difficult as the battle is, it seems like you have to go to war. And Harry and Meghan have chosen to go to war to fight for the kind of life that they want to live. So here we are, if we're going to be fans of theirs. That means that we are in a war. But I will oblige because sometimes I do think that it can become quite draining when you are consistently getting what appears to be bad news like the kate scandal kate gates went on for quite a bit but that's because they kept on 
doing one stupid thing after the other. So what can we do? What can we do? We have to report it. And do you know what? Part of the battle is actually reporting the stupid things that the Kensington Palace, the British side, do. Reminding everyone how silly they are, the wrong decisions they make, and when they are trying to get one over on Harry and Meghan, who are our faves. And then, but also, I get you, I take your point in that we can get so much, we can get to do so much of that that we forget to highlight the good things that Harry and Meghan are doing. And most of what this video is about today is highlighting the good things that Harry and Meghan are doing. So which is why you can see this article on the screen, which talks about BBC acquiring suits. So of course, you know, this article discussing BBC acquiring suit is from BBC and their reporting on it was <laughs> almost what I would call ridiculous in how matter of fact they were in reporting about the latest acquisition. They said the BBC has acquired all nine seasons of the hit American legal drama suits mockumentary sent Dennis Medical and the series continuation of the best man films, the best man. The final chapters for BBC, iPlayer and TV channels. The three titles have been acquired from NBC Universal Global TV Distribution. And then, you know, they give a summary of the three programs that they bought. And the very at the very last line, uh, part of the line, the last sentence is got Meghan Markle, remember me. It even pains them to even give Megan the credit, right? But compare this to the American article reporting on the same thing. They're like, BBC buy suits following smash year on Netflix. They didn't even mention the other things that BBC purchased, right? And look at their reporting on it. The BBC has acquired Suits, the smash legal drama that was the most watched show on Netflix last year. The corporation has acquired a trio of titles from NBC Universal Global TV distribution for BBC iPlayer, blah, 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 blah. And going to the last sentence, the show featured Meghan Markle in earlier season. They gave her her own sentence in the article. <laughs> which I thought was really good and just highlighted the difference between British and American reporting. And of course we had the haters having a meltdown. So look at Dan Wooten saying, why the hell has the BBC just spent hundreds of thousands of our TV license fees to our, he says, our, anyway, and let's ignore that for the moment. Why had the, I'll start again. Why the hell has the BBC just spent hundreds of thousands of our TV license fees to buy the Meghan Markle drama suits for the iPlayer, even though it's over a decade old and already on Netflix? More propaganda for the Sussexes, I imagine. A despicable waste of money. Who let this man out of the hole he has been hiding in? Who did that? <laughs> Who did that? Meanwhile, the Sussex squad were just like, make that money, Megan. Make that money, yes. And by the way, I thought they said Megan was a little known Z-list actress, right? So how come they seem to be swarming over every little thing that Harry and Megan have done, right? It's quite amazing that they decided they were going to pick up the series, no matter how well the series did on Netflix. I say this considering how the royal family behaved towards Invictus Games, despite the fact that it's the Invictus Games bring so much benefit to veterans and would actually bring uh, so much benefit to the country if Invictus 
was going to be hosted by the UK. Speaking of Invictus Games, I'm not sure what's going on, but it seems like the UK are still fighting to host the bid in the UK in 2027. What are you guys' feelings about it? Veterans Minister Johnny Mercer is still very enthused about the possibility of this happening. Yeah, it's literally scaring me because I do not want to see the Invictus Games in the UK. Maybe in 20 years when they've learned how to behave, not even 20, maybe in 200 years when they've learned how to behave, they can bring the Invictus Games to the UK. There is a video of the interview and it's quite clear that the host of the interview, he was having, I think it was BBC Breakfast, right? He, the show hosts were not sure that you, the bid for uh, hosting the Invictus Games in the UK would be successful because they were asking him, so who is in charge of making the decision about whether the UK would be able to win the bid? And uh, Johnny Mercer says the foundation, I'm sure they felt like saying, not if Harry has anything to do about it. <laughs> Let's listen to the video. I almost didn't want to play it, but I think it would be a good one to listen to what he had to say. Hang on. Let me pull that out for you. All of these um, big events that you bid for, you're going to have to make that calculation, right? But this is, this, the, the benefits of this are, are so transformative. Um, and you really have to go to the games like we did in Düsseldorf and elsewhere to see that real power of recovery. And in terms of how much we spend on on veterans and veterans recovery, I mean, you know, the country spends sort of six point five billion pounds a year on compensation and, uh, and pensions and, and veterans care. Uh, veterans care genuinely has sort of transformed over the last four or five years. And, uh, for me, this is the kind of um, you know this is the, the kind of centerpiece of a real festival. A global recovery that you know Americans and Australians will come to, and you know we're in a great position to lead that now. But who's the goal is it? Who gets the events? How do you get the Yeah, so they, they, I mean, it's a bidding process. It's a competitive bid process, and Washington are, are in for it as well. And uh, you know, but we're going to put a good bid together and, and, and try and make it as easy as possible for the for the deciders. How much does it matter for it to be at home? It would be incredible. You cannot, you cannot explain. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> if you want to watch the full thing, I'm just putting the link to my Instagram page in the comment section. I'm going to pin it up there now. Um, You can watch the whole thing on my Instagram page. Look at them, nervous as hell, because they know what they've done to Harry and Meghan. They know, they know. <laughs> they know that if Harry has anything to do with it, they are not getting to, they're not going to be able to host the games. Nope, 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 nope. I mean, for goodness sake, not after they have done, I mean, just look at this article, right? Petty royals accused of ignoring UK military veterans due to Prince Harry Rift. Despite its strong association with our armed forces, the royal family has not commented on the Invictus Games for a number of years. Senior royals have been accused of ignoring British Armed Forces veterans competing in the Invictus Games because of the family's ongoing rift with Prince Harry and his wife, Meghan Markle. See? If you want to watch the full video, you can uh, access it on my Instagram page and it is now pinned to the top of the chat for your convenience, okay? So, 
And I also hope uh, that they don't, I think they have a few requirements and one of them is that they're able to offer a legacy to the games if they intend on hosting the games. So they don't want it to be just like a flash in the pan kind of thing, just like a one-time event. They want the Invictus Games to become established after the games have been hosted in the hosted hosting country. It just reminds me of Dusseldorf and how they decided that they would um, set up infrastructure to ensure that the benefits which are given to veterans during the Invictus Games continue after the games. So it's the same kind of thing here. And I was able to get a screenshot of the legacy requirement. It says that any aspiring host city must demonstrate a tangible legacy plan alongside delivering an international sporting event that attracts spectators, sponsors and wider society to attend and show their respect for the armed forces men and women in recovery. Do you guys think that the UK is able to offer legacy infrastructure which will be successful after the games have ended? Taking, the, taking uh, for an example, they've got the Commonwealth Games which are doing, which is dying a slow death <laughs> and just to think about it, actually, if the Invictus Games uh, is to, to be hosted in the UK, and then there is supposed to be a legacy program running after the Invictus Games has been concluded, does that mean that they will now make the royal family, aka William, the patron of the Invictus Games. Does, is that what that means? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. While they're thinking about that, how will they overcome articles like this one? Stay away from Britain, Megan. You're not welcome here. Okay, so if they're thinking that they want to host the Invictus Games, how are they going to overcome articles like this one? Or this one. The monarchy's future depends on the obliteration of the Sussexes, Tom Bauer says. Well, you want the benefit of the person without the person. How is that possible? I can't imagine the amount of pressure that Harry and Meghan must be under at the moment with the UK government and their agents trying to infiltrate all of their businesses, charities, friendships, everything related to them, just because of how well they do everything and how successful they are at everything that they do. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Just, it's enough for someone to ask. And a lot of people have asked this question already in the comment section, like, is there a pattern here or is it all in my head? The UK bidding for the Invictus equals Prince Harry, right? BBC bought the rights to suits equals Princess Meghan. Charles adding Sussex.com uh, Sussex to the royal website equals to Harry and Meghan. What's the end game here? <laughs> Do you get the feeling that they are being bribed, that they are being in courted, they are being enticed? <laughs> And someone replied to that question with this little article, which I thought was quite interesting. So let me read it to you. So they said, this is what a crisis comes professional told me. She fully believes that Harry and Meghan genuinely love each other and will stay together forever for both business and personal reasons, right? But she believes that the British royal family tried to engage in outrage marketing, which works like a charm in many situations. 
But Billy Idol threw a monkey wrench in the plan by briefing the tabloids because he's a petty, jealous, insecure little boy who can't stand the attention being off him for one second. Despite the proverbial horse leaving the barn because of King Joffrey leaving the stable doors open, Harry and Meghan continued to be bankable and most importantly, likable. While popularity can be manufactured, likability cannot, and neither can being genuine, both of which Harry and Meghan are, regardless of their faults and flaws. The purchase of suits rights by the BBC plus the Evictus bid, the linking back to the couple's website and the continued acknowledgement of the kids is the British royal family's attempt to regain control of the narrative, especially since Billy Idol effed it up so badly and destroyed his reputation in the process. And for the record, she also believes that Billy Idol and Kate Middleton are heading for divorce and are just playing chicken in the tabloids to see who blinks first. To me, this is the most reasonable and least attached explanation of all. Make of that what you will. <laughs> what do you guys think? What are your theories about all of this? What do you, why do you think that the British government or the British people are looking for uh, have bought the right to suits, want to host Invictus, and have linked back to Harry and Meghan's website. Tell me what you think in the comment section, please. Do you think it is them trying to clean up their image by associating with people who are succeeding at what they're doing? because it it can be that simple. I think it can be that simple. They just, since they are not doing so well, they want access to people who are actually doing well. Meanwhile, William just continues to make a, colossal fool of himself because instead of trying to address the situation i'm going to deal with this in my um saturday video live stream he continues to um get people to just come out and uh, speak on princess kate's behalf he's got the archbishop of canterbury coming out to say people should be allowed to recover and be private about their recovery. And he's had um, the Labour Party leader, Keir Starmer, come out, I think that was yesterday, to say, yes, Kate deserves her privacy if that's what she wants, okay? But... He has not done anything beyond that to resolve the situation in terms of his own actions. As a matter of fact, Camilla Tomini, uh, just before I got on here, she uh, tweeted that uh, William is no longer discussing, uh, he's no longer allowing access to him by the wider press. So Reuters and um, CNN have been banned from the royal pool. CNN and Reuters have been banned from the royal pool by William. Dana says, uh, sorry, the Arna says, the royal family are trying to glam on reflected glory from Harry and Meghan while absolutely refusing to acknowledge how horribly they were and still are being treated at the behest of the royal family. 
Dana says, I see Vine for UK to host the Invictus Games is a trap to push H out of the games. I don't trust the royal family of which the king and his heir are vile and vindictive players to win at all costs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you agree? No control. They want to control Harry and Meghan. That's who they are. And yeah, I think I saw somewhere in one article that to William, the worst thing that has happened in all of this is that they completely lost control of the narrative. And to him, that is the worst part of the whole thing, that they lost control of the narrative. And so he just wants a situation where he will be able to control Harry and Meghan. But then, if it is it's the BBC, because see how the association of things can work? Because we have seen the royal family and the British media working hand in hand, even though it is said that it is the BBC who has bought the rights, when we're thinking about it, it's as good as saying that it's the royal family who are taking all these steps and doing all these things. It's not, it's supposedly not, it's just the BBC. But then the royal family could be doing it through the BBC and they could be doing it through the veterans, uh, the Ministry of Veterans. The veterans minister could be taking action through, from he could be taking orders from the royal family regarding this. It's just ridiculous. Do your own thing. Mind your business. Get on with your life. You broke up with me. So let's get to the end. But then I think a small part of me still thinks that King Charles has been sending smoke signals to Prince Harry because what he thought was going to happen has not happened. And instead of William getting better, he probably thought, okay, William is ineffective as a person, as a leader, because he's got Harry behind him. So if I cede to everything that he asks or he demands for because he's the heir to the throne, so if I accede to everything he asks for by getting Harry out of the way, maybe he will step up. But rather than William stepping up, he stepped further down, like even those little engagements he used to do, he stopped doing. And every time he went out to do something, he made a complete mess of it, complete mess of it. So um, I think also there's a small part of the royal family which are sending uh, smoke signals to Prince Harry. Thing is that they can't get their they can't get their message right because there's so many political interests at play here. You've got William, you've got Camilla, you've got Kate who doesn't want to be divorced. You've got uh, the other girl, what's her name, Rose Chumley, who wants to become queen. Uh, You've got the men in grey suits who know that if Prince Harry becomes regent, for instance, they are they better all start looking for new jobs. That's it. And then you've got the media as well. You've got the media who are holding on uh, to their power over the royal family, over businesses in the UK, over their power over the UK, basically, for dear life. They're hanging on for dear life. Rupert Murdoch's vice-like grip over every part of the UK is what Prince Harry is trying to loosen, and he's holding on for dear life. He's ready to literally do anything to make sure that he does not lose his power over the UK. Let me look at your comments. Uh, to the games, they want to, they just want to put Harry in an 
in a very uncomfortable position because the games will have to invite disgusting Willie. But Willie said he can't stand to be in the same room as he as Harry. So how is that going to happen? He said he can't stand to be in the same room as Harry. In their recently concluded engagement, the Diana Award, he wouldn't even let Harry's virtual engagement with the recipients of the award begin until he was out of the building. Which is why it's so confusing. What they aim to gain from all of this is so confusing. Because on one hand, you can... Uh, I don't know. William does not like the truth, so he would ban the wider press because he is such a child. Yeah, this is exactly what has happened. He has banned the wider press from, from the royal pool. He is now only talking to the British press who are in support of everything that he is doing. And I think that it has gotten to the point where the British press, although it would seem like they would love such a thing, but it then now points to them that um, while we're happy that you want to talk to just us, but your international credibility requires you to also liaise with the wider press. So how are you going to deal with this? They are kind of at a loss as well at this point. He says, William will then get the opportunity to ignore Harry totally in public, which will be embarrassing and tabloids trash news. Hmm. I don't know what they can do about William, honestly. I don't know what they can do about him because he just seems to be the obstacle that is that UK has got at the moment. He is going to be the obstacle that the UK will have in the future unless it's something to do with unless it's something to do with um Anything corrupt. Look at this. I'm going to share uh, share my screen so that you can see the article. I didn't initially add this to the presentation. Oh, you can't see it. It's so small. But yeah, this is the uh, tweet from Camilla Tomini saying, the royal family are sidelining photographers and picture agencies such as Getty and Reuters and are instead adopting a DIY approach. So because they have been exposed, they want to ensure that the do not expose themselves to more scrutiny by excluding people who can give you independent assessments, independent reports on what you're doing. They really, really believe that the royal family are above everyone and are above accountability. And it is amazing to me that the the British people are accepting of this kind of behavior from the royal family. It's just ridiculous to me. For all the talk of, no wonder they are being compared to uh, <laughs> North Korea. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, let's continue. Speaking of our faves moving on and making waves, this is the update on Megan's new page on Instagram. It is up to 556,000 followers. 
which is one is not the quickest climb ever. I think when they were with the royal family, their previous Instagram page got to over a million uh, within a very short time, almost record-breaking time. But this is also a great feat. I know a lot of people who have been on Instagram and they haven't even gotten up to 500 followers, <laughs> myself included, not to talk about 556,000 followers in about a week. So there you go. And this, um, with this, Megan hasn't even posted anything on her page yet. So it's amazing. Amazing. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and sign up to uh, Megan's new page on Instagram. It's right there. Very easy to sign up for it. Uh, it the name of the page is up there on the screen. I had a lot of people saying that they don't do Instagram. And I can't, I, you know what, I completely understand because you can see some of the most foolish things on Instagram. But for our girl, Megan, we can afford to do that, right? <laughs> it's one more app <laughs> and she just does need the follow. Okay, before we continue, if you're new here, how can I invite you to join our growing community? We are in interesting times. I almost, with this battle that we are engaged in on behalf of Harry and Meghan, I almost feel like I am living in the time of the civil rights movement because although it's not as large as uh, what it was back in the day, but this is a fight for something. In an age where people would tell you that it's easier for you not to fight for anything, just go along to get along. And a lot of people compromise themselves to an extent that they eventually are not happy in their lives. When you've got two young people who are busy fighting for their lives, and it's so good to be alive in this time, watching everything play out. And can I just say that being part of this movement has grown me up, for instance. I truly, for a British person, used to believe everything I saw on the news. Now I believe absolutely nothing. In fact, when I'm talking to people right now, I listen to what reports they have to share about what they heard on the news and I said okay they said that right okay what did they say on Twitter <laughs> what did they say on Twitter <laughs> this same thing you're talking about what did they say on Twitter oh thank you very much Sharon <laughs> what this same thing you're talking about what did they say about it on Twitter and what did they say about it on all the other social medias, because you get your truth now from social media, not the news. The news is just propaganda. Anyway, so if you are new here, go ahead, subscribe to my channel. Um, one of my goals for this year, or rather for the month of March, is to get to... to 3,000 subscribers. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. So if we do a hard push, we'll be able to get to 3,000 subscribers by the end of March. And if you're a returning viewer, please go ahead to subscribe. For those who have already subscribed, please like, share, and leave a comment right? So if you're thinking like, gosh, I hear all of this just like me when I first started uh, joining um, the Harry and Meghan discussion spaces, I would join the videos and I wouldn't know what to say, but just leave a heart emoji or something like that in the comment section. And you have done wonderfully well. That is the best currency you can give to me at the moment <laughs> and i thank you very much for it okay all right so 
Um, moving on, let's talk about the Prince Harry's case against the sun. Hi, Sussex love. How are you doing? How are you doing? Sorry, I'm late. Uh, let me uh, click on your comments. Sorry, I'm late. I'll have to catch up most of it on replay. Thank you very much. TikTok is the best. Young people are open and free with such variety on TikTok, depth and silliness. Uh, their creativity is, you know, one day I was watching, I was scrolling through uh, TikTok several times. I think I literally fell from my chair to the floor because of how creatively... <laughs> They are on TikTok telling the truth without any any deference to anything at all. Love it as well. I will look out for is that your name on TikTok, Sussex Love? I will look for your page on TikTok because I'm on TikTok as well. And House of Sussex is on TikTok as well. House of Sussex is on TikTok as well. Ooh, guys, before I move on to the next story, uh, we've had her on here before, House of Sussex. She is a relatively new Sussex-friendly channel. Mm. Can we go ahead and subscribe to her channel as well? As you know, the more voices, the merrier and the better it is. House of Sussex, you want to put your the link to your channel in the comment section. You can go ahead to do that. And I will pin it to the top of the chat so that people can find you. Uh Thanks, Gail. Thanks for Gail says thanks for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, House of Sussex. Okay. Let's see how quickly we can get her to one thousand subscribers. When I first started, the um, Royal Sussex channel was so, so helpful to me. They literally put their arms around me. I think it must have been twice or thrice because my first two channels, I kept having uh, YouTube demonetizing my channel for reused content. So Byron, he's such a sweetheart. And the other ladies, Sharon, Augustine, Lydia, Washington, and Connie Balmer, and Cookies and Cream, they all put their arms around me and they were like, don't worry, we are with you. We will get you to your 1,000 subscribers. So I'm just now paying it forward with House of Sussex. So... House of Sussex, are you able to include your link in the chat so that everyone can go and subscribe to your channel? If you can't, let me do that. Let me do, let me find your channel and put the link in the chat. Thank you, Sandra Hill. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you so much. Hey, let me do that. So, uh, got the link to. Okay, don't worry. I've got it. I've put it now in the chat. Uh, I've put. It... I will find my, I will uh, pin it to the top of the chat now. Look at me doing everything and talking at the same time. Like I am multitasking on YouTube like a pro. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Anyway, 
Um, okay, uh, wonderful. I am love is all on TikTok. I'm still working up my nerve and getting my Sussex Love channel up and going, tried a little experiment, but I'm not there yet. Do you know what I would love? What I would love is for us to be able to develop like a Sussex friendly content creator forum where we meet up to share techniques and styles and methods of doing things. So I would really love an opportunity to hang out with you guys. I'm already chatting with House of Sussex uh, on TikTok. So I will reach out to you, Sussex Love, and maybe we can have our own, you know, smaller group where we can exchange ideas on there as well. Let me bring it back to what we're talking about today. Guys, how excited were you today? Was it yesterday? Thank you. Uh, sorry. Thank you, Simi, for the super sticker. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. To see, I, I think that's part of the reason why we have been seeing uh, the ridiculousness as well going on in the news. There were so many new allegations brought forward by Harry and his team, and we're going to go through them um, in this video, okay? I'll just swiftly go through them. They're not that many, um, just so that I can get you out of here before Baron starts up with his live stream. Okay, so it says, I'm not going to read all of the article, just a few excerpts, just so that you get the sense of what I'm talking about. It says, Rupert Murdoch turned a blind eye to an extensive cover-up of wrongdoing at his newspapers. Prince Harry's lawyers have alleged at the High Court in London the direct allegations against the 93-year-old billionaire about activity at his publications are the latest stage in Harry's war against the tabloid media with lawyers for the Duke of Sussex and others, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> accusing the media mogul of overseeing a culture of impunity at newsgroup newspapers, the publisher of The Sun, and now defunct News of the World. Oh, oh, Marcia said he's on already. He's coming on earlier these days. That's why I come on at this time because he usually comes on like from two o'clock. Oh, thank you all for all of you who are here. <laughs> and I will soon be concluding this live stream so that you can catch up with what he's doing. Okay, so in the court documents, David Sherman, who is representing the Duke, among other claimants, said Murdoch's dominant position as executive chairman of News Corp and director of NGN's parent company, News International, meant he would have known the extent of NGN's wrongdoing when phone hacking was first revealed. So all this while he has been hiding and saying, no, I'm just the chairman, I'm just you know, I'm too far up the top. I don't deal with these kind of things in my position as executive executive chairman. But now the D Prince Harry's lawyers are saying with the extent of what was going on, you surely knew exactly what was going on. To which Dennis Welch, who is a forever Harry and Meghan stands, <laughs> loudly clapped on Twitter saying yes absolutely you see this <laughs> so the next allegation was Prince Harry seeking to amend this the, the allegation to include the things that would have happened when he was much younger than he had previously stated in his in his original claim. So at the hearing in the Rolls building of the High Court today, the Duke applied to amend his particulars of claim. For the Duke, among other claimants, David Sherbert said the proposed amended 
case is through the period starting in 1994. The current pleading starts in 1996. In 1994 and 1995, at that stage, the Duke of Sussex was 10, 10 years old. <laughs> so now they want to take it, the claims back to things that happened from when Harry was 10 years old. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine them bugging Harry's phones, his pager, his emails, and whatever kind of communication from when he was 10 years old? This is, I think, at this point, at this point, I think is where Rupert Murdoch is going to realize that he's not going to get away with the allegations in Harry's claim. Another thing that just came up was that uh, Prince Harry's lawyer has just referred to a document called the PI Annex, which is a long list of private investigators, the vast majority allegedly unlawful, who were tasked by Rupert Murdoch's papers. Okay. And this is part of the documents released by the government in the Levinson II inquiry, which they're able to use in this hearing as well. Another allegation which came up, Sir William John Lewis, who serves as the publisher and chief executive officer of the Washington Post, has just been named in court for allegedly covering up phone hacking for his former employer, Rupert Murdoch. Remember that the Washington Post is now owned by Prince Harry's new friend, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> that must be as uncomfortable as hell for everyone in that situation at the moment. Well, what did they think? What did they think was going to happen? Let me look at your comments. House of Sussex says, did Murdoch not get engaged recently? <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yes, he did. He's 93 years old. He's almost 100 years old. And he is, and he just got engaged. That means there's hope for all of us. <laughs> There's hope for all of us, honestly. The next one is that Victoria Newton, who has recently been on television asking everyone to lay off Kate, was also named in Prince Harry's court document. Look at this. So she was the one who wrote this article, Lay Off Kate. But she's also the editor of The Sun, and she was the one who approved Jeremy Clarkson's article where he wrote that abusive article against Megan. Right, that one. And Prince Harry, Harry also says that his landlines were bugged by Murdoch's papers. And not just that, Rupert Murdoch's British tabloid papers bugged Prince Harry's landline phones and accessed the messages on the page of his late mother, Princess Diana. The British, Royal, the British Royal's legal team told London's High Court on Thursday today. So much. Do you know what? I think... Um, Wait, let me tell you about the next one first before I tell you what I think. So um, the next allegation being discussed relates to Meghan. Yep, Prince Harry went there. He absolutely went there. The article that was quoted is, the claim is already set to be taken up to 2016, but the prince also seeks to add a new allegation to his claim relating to his wife, Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, 
Chevron added, in 2016, the defendant instructed one of its regular private investigators, Dano Hanks. What we say he did was obtain private information in the form of a report about the, Dussex, the Duke of Sussex's then new girlfriend, Meghan Markle. He obtained further information for publication in The Sun. Sherburn said the claimants had previously provided the amended particulars of claim on 6th October 2022, but that without warning, news group had launched a strikeout application. So that's, but the major part of this new slide is that he had not previously included the allegation about Megan, but then decided that he would do it now. Do you know what I think? Harry is playing chess and they must have thought that <clears throat> he didn't include this allegation because he was afraid but now that the hearing is closer is close by he is throwing everything and the kitchen sink at Rupert Murdoch and he needs to because Rupert Murdoch has proven to be a formidable enemy and I think adding these allegations to the case at this point was deliberate. He deliberately withheld some of these allegations not to, so as not to show his full hand to Murdoch's lawyers, right? <clears throat> he deliberately didn't do that. And while he was gathering more evidence, And someone else commented on, in relation to the allegations concerning, regarding Megan, someone said they read her phone, I, I read her phone calls weren't drama filled and scandalous, so they never reported them. They were too nice, deplorable ass people. Can you imagine? And then there was a fuller report, which I want to talk to you about. He says, one of the stories reported the smitten prince had bombarded the then Meghan Markle with text messages. On 31st October and 1st November 2016, The Sun published two articles by Emily Andrews and James Beale concerning the claimant's relationship with Meghan Markle, the court was told. The claimant will contend that in late October 2016, the defendant, through the journalist James Bill, instructed an American private investigator, Dano Hanks, to obtain private information in the form of a report on the claimant's new relationship with his now wife. So I've got the video um, where they were interviewing this private investigator. Uh, let me play it for you. I'll just play a little excerpt of the video and then you can find the full video on my Instagram page. Okay. The link to my Instagram page is at the top of the chat. Why were you? so interested in Prince Harry. Well, it's not a case of me being interested. It was a case that the uh, editors made it very clear that uh, you put uh, Prince William on the front of a newspaper. He doesn't sell as many copies as uh, Prince Harry. So uh, Harry had become, as explained to me by a couple of editors, Harry had basically become the new Diana. They were much more interested in Harry than William. He didn't really get up to much. He didn't do much. He wasn't much of a subject for a tabloid newspaper. He was just, um, there was nothing there until he met Kate. So guys, you can watch the um, rest of the video on my Instagram page. You can find the link to my Instagram page at the top of the chat. Okay. Uh, I hope you can find it. Let, let me see whether you can see it, whether it is there. Let me see whether it is there. Yeah, so you can find the link at the top of the chat, okay? <laughs> so... 
exactly more proof that william is the irrelevant one and i think he knows it which is it's a tough thing to deal with you know it must be tough to know that it's to know that your younger brother is more popular than you are and it takes a strong person to be able to it takes a normal person who has had a bit of experience with the good and the bad side of life to be able to cope with being around someone whose light shines as brightly as harry and megan's Anyway, so um, just to bring to your attention, in case you didn't hear me very well when I said it, Emily Andrews, who always reports negatively on Prince Harry and Meghan, has been involved with the story about Harry and Meghan since the beginning of their relationship. It says on 31st October and the 1st of November, The Sun published two articles by Emily Andrews and James Beale. No wonder she is that invested in bashing Harry and Meghan because she probably knew that her she had some responsibility and that Prince Harry may call her to take account of her own responsibility in all of this. She has been snooping on them since the beginning of their relationship. Okay. So, um, I will scroll through. Let me see whether I can find the... Mm. Sussex Love, beg your pardon, please can you give me the name of your TikTok again? And I will just write it down now. And let me see. Judy says, Harry is making sure that the children... Let's see. Harry is making sure that the children and his wife will not be harassed ever. Let them pay Harry through their noses. The harder they make it, the more they are going to pay. And Harry is done being nice. <laughs> Love is all. Thank you. Love is all. Um, Harry is done being nice. And so it is quite obvious that he is going to drag them through the ringer. He, they, if they were smart, they would have tried to settle this case with him, and whatever he agrees, whatever, and agree to whatever the terms of his settlement agreement would be. But you see, they have been underestimating Harry for forever, and so that is something that is not going to come easily to them at all. So I do not think that uh, they will be able to get past their own mistakes in all of this. Guys, since Baron is already on, let me end this video here. We'll pick this up from Sunday. Uh, Sussex Love says... What's heartbreaking is watching Diana's 12-year-old fight for her now like he couldn't when she died and his wife and children as well. Good King Harry. Absolutely. Absolutely. He must have been... Uh, a lot of people, um, even people in the squad, if I might say so, sometimes would just say, why can't Harry just leave this alone and get on with his life? I believe that this is his own path to healing because I think the full circle of life requires reconciliation to every part of your life, like your, 
your past life, your present life, and your future life, okay? So part of that reconciliation requires him to be able to say to himself, when he looks in the mirror, I am satisfied with myself or how I have addressed issues relating to my mother. I am satisfied with myself. When I look at myself in the mirror, I am satisfied with myself, with how I have protected my family. He has, as he said in spare, I want to be good. I want to be honorable. But how can you be good and honorable when you don't deal with the issues of your past and they are definitely going to negatively impact the, your future? And that was such a traumatic part. At 12 years old, he needed therapy to heal. He needed Megan for his heart to mend and his children to fulfill his life and give him the strength to fight the fight. Do you know what? I wouldn't say it's surprising, but see, Harry, he, helped, he definitely has a very paternal side to him. It oozes of him just to see how he is with children. I think if he hadn't been able to have his own wife and children, he would literally have been half of himself because there's that side of himself that is so lovely to see. Joanne Baker says, oh, okay. I was going to rush off because I don't like to be on at the same time as Baron. <laughs> Cookies and cream. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> I was going to rush off. Uh, Joanne Baker says, I would go further. And not only Emily, but a lot more of the tabloid journalists were spying on Harry and Meghan. Yep. Yeah. 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 Wheezy, Baron, and Judy. TMZ has a show tonight investigating the Princess of Wales. I saw that. It's called Where is Kate? <laughs> what happened to the BBC announcement schedule? I don't know. If you ask me, who am I going to ask? I am still waiting. I'm still refreshing my browser. <laughs> waiting for this announcement to drop. And can you believe that the, B the British reporters, the British journalists, they played along and they were reporting to the front of, um, is it Buckingham Palace or Kensington Palace, as though they were waiting for the drop of some huge announcement. Cookies and Cream says the unroyals and the racist thugs should have left Harry and his family alone. Yep, because now he's coming at them with all his strength, his energy. It's like, I'm sure in their house in Montecito, they have a war room where they gather to do the plotting. <laughs> I wonder about TMZ, you know, um, as much as I agree with you, but I think more than it being, I think that it's more of a partnership than, I don't know, but I feel like it's more of a partnership than fully owned by Murdoch. And also there are different rules mm -hmm. of engagement in America than UK. So even as much as they would like to carry out all that Murdoch would want, but they're also mindful of what is required in the American market. Uh, the American market. I'm still waiting for this announcement. I thought I was the only one who remembered that we were waiting for this announcement because I've been waiting for the other shoe to drop. I was on pins and needles the day that the tweet came in stating that we were waiting for this announcement. I was like, what is all this? What on earth? 
what on earth? Judy says, Harry is such a wise man. He's protecting his children and his brother's children as well. In fact, you know what? The entire royal family. And I think that what has happened so far is that little by little, the royal family was beginning to gain their independence. Only uh, which is part of the reason why we are seeing conflicting messages from Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace. As a warning to William, can you believe that these people dropped this news? I didn't, was going to talk about it until Saturday, but since we're still here, just before I go, I will share this with you, that there was an article that the British media buried where they said in the Daily Beast that the son, I think it was, paid 6500 for a photograph of William in a bikini. So many questions. So many questions. What was he doing in a bikini? Let me share this with you. <laughs> I don't have the photograph of William in a bikini, but <laughs> the article... <laughs> See how the son paid 6500 for a photo of William in a bikini. Guess who approved the payment? Yep, none other than Re Reheba Cooks. None other than Reheba Cooks. So is it any wonder how many of these kind of things do the media have? You know, how many of these kind of things do the media have? Okay, guys, uh, that's all I have for this evening. Um, <laughs> uh, House of Sussex says, part of the pegging. <laughs> Woo! I believe a lot more is going to come out and it's going to be prim prime time TV. And I've got my golden chair just waiting with my popcorn ready to enjoy the show. Um, that's all I have for this evening. So um, if you enjoyed the quiz on Saturday, let's get ready for this, this Saturday's quiz. It is episode three of the Archetypes podcast. And just to be clear, it is the one with Mindy Kaling, the, um, the stigma of singleton, the stigma of singleton. So get ready, get ready, get ready, because I think um, before the end, I will be discussing um, a further development I'm working on behind the scenes regarding these quizzes and I will be sharing the, the news with you as we go along but let me not speak too soon just so that you are properly surprised when the news drops <laughs> okay guys thank you all for being here and I look forward to seeing you the next next one on Saturday. Don't forget, get ready for your quiz, Archetypes, Episode 3, Sigma of Singleton, Mindy Kaling. I am ready and I hope you will be too. Okay. And um, until next time, it's Wheezy signing out. Ciao.